talked about earlier today. So you look at an area where water concentrates, water and nutrients concentrate in and around plants. So you've got to start to think about, well, how did that happen? How did it start? And it's the geology that starts that process. So you've got to start to read the geology. So you look at the landscape and you look for an area where the landscape narrows. So we've got a, a knob out here and another one here. So this area narrows back. So it tells you straight away that when this floodplain formed, it formed from this point. So this point created the narrowing. So the sediment coming down couldn't move through because the water was slowed at this point started to, to drop. And then gradually over time, the floodplain formed. Now, if you look, see the water flows down in around here. This is this gully. Is that normal, do you think? Did it used to flow there? Does not, it always flow there? Not to build the floodplain up there. Not to build the floodplain up there. Good, very good, Martin. Can I just put that for a sec? So when you've got a narrow, yep. why is the water slowing down? Because when it narrows, that volume of water that used to spread over that whole area can't get through here. So it slows, which starts the deposition of material. Vegetation grows here. So you'll see your wetland type species will grow in this area. And when that happens, that minimises the next flow's ability to come through, and so the system goes. What you can't see is that this used to be like that. You're looking at it now with the floodplain filled in, but it wasn't like this. So this was cut right down. So all of this material is eroded out, and that's all new. So if you age this, you'd find that this would be hundreds of thousands or millions of years old, and floodplains in Australia are around about 12 to 15,000 years of age. So they're very, very new. But if there was a knob there and a knob there, there must have always been a channel in between them, mustn't there? No, no, that's how it eroded down. <coughs> so it eroded down where these points, for whatever reason, whether they were harder, probably more likely clay knobs, so they held together. They withstood the erosive effects of that water where it moved down. <coughs> and so this area was more vulnerable, so it's eroded out. So we're looking at one process where it eroded down, and then this is the process of when it started to rebuild. We're focusing on the when it started to rebuild uh, moment. Because this eroded, all of this erosion took place, and I don't know the geology around here, but I would suspect that we would be looking at, probably there were, was probably 500 metres or a kilometre more material on top of our heads, once upon a time, which is all eroded away. So I, I don't know what, how big it would have been around here, but I know as we go, you know, back down to where we were at Bylong, the geology of that area is that they said it was up to a kilometre higher, or 500 metres higher so originally. Stuart, does that mean then it's natural for erosion and then build up as a natural process? Yes, it is. The thing that's changed is the length of time at which it happens. Most of the erosion in Australia happened in the absence of plants, not with plants. So for the last however many years we've had plants here, so there's been the odd ice age, which is why the formation of most of our floodplains have taken place in the last 12 to 15,000 years, because that was when the last ice age was. So that was when the most amount of soil was moving. Prior to that, it was stable, and then we have ice ages, which diminishes the amount of vegetation, and then the system rebuilds. So Martin rightly said, the floodplain can't have built when there was a channel coming down through here. That's pretty obvious. How could a floodplain build all that sedimentation take place when there was a channel taking all the water away? Couldn't have happened. So now what we look for is we look for where is the highest point of that landscape? That floodplain. Look across it. That's why I pulled you up here. No, I don't look. Look right in front of you. Oh, closest thing here. Look just right in front of your face. Bank. Bank. Look at look at this here. You see where it, where the wooden posts are there? Yep. It's lower. It rises up, mm -hmm. and then it crests over and lower on another side. Yep. That's where the highest. That's where the main flow used to flow. So what happens in the forming of a floodplain <coughs> is you got a, you got these different varying speeds of water. So the water flows the fastest where there's the least amount of vegetation. Where would you expect the least amount of vegetation to be in a landscape? The highest part or the lowest part? The lowest part. Would it be? No, the highest. Oh, highest. Oh, highest part. Say it again. When you have a flow event, the creek runs. It shouldn't, but it does. But what keeps it flowing for the next three weeks, three months, four years, up there. Everything that was held up, up there. Everything that was held up up there. So the more moisture you can hold up, the more fertility you can hold up there, the more productive all the land sits below it.
what used to happen is the floodplain used to be connected with the surrounding landscape. Not anymore. These incisions now have cut that off. Not even the floodplain is connected with the flow line anymore. So our entire floodplain systems don't work. So, so you've, you've got your, you're talking with your, um, your flows, right? And I've explained the situation. We've got a flow that actually runs through, through, through our farm and I'm collecting everybody else's dirt. But at the end of it, the farm drops off into the next guy's place and I'm, you know, over the top of me. Yep. So what I've, all of a sudden I've got a situation where this groove is coming in. Headwall cut, yep. Is there some way we, we can stop that sort of? Good question, good question. Because I was getting early. there. I do get a little bit lost at times. But you, you see this, you guys I rely and you bring me back on in line all the time. Yes, the cutouts coming back onto our flight. So, why is this floodplain still here? Why did it fall? Because that should be still happening, or should yes, have happened. We, we, in the last run through, we collected over a, a, a metre of dirt. Ah, uh, sorry, a foot of dirt through, <coughs> through, across our, our low area. But at the end of it, I've got this, I'm getting this drop that, you know, I can't. So, when the drop happens, he, and then he comes up and so that the water doesn't run everywhere in his place, he digs it out a little bit more so that the water will run into the certain space so he can have another channel. Now, what you've got to start to say is, okay, so if this floodplain was able to form with all of that energy in the water and more than likely far more energy than we're seeing today because there was more rain, right? Then how did it do it? And it did it by having water counteract water. So water de-energizes water, hence the patterns that I'm talking about. So these two flow lines came back together at this point. Because those two flow lines came together, they cancelled one another out, which meant there was a dissipating effect. So the dissipating effect created sediment and a pond. The pond then dissipated with the vegetation that grew dissipated, all the energy coming down this system at this point. It was repeated at that point. It was repeated at the next one, all the way up. So how do you dissipate the energy in now an eroded system? You must have water doing the work for you. We are got, we've got massive big machines and all of this um, ability, none of it is as good as using the natural process. The natural process is water. So we have to work out how do we get the system so that we're using the water to do all the work. And that's why you can get away with no engineers, just simple earthen structures or maybe it's rock, maybe it's log, but something so it gets the patterns of the water coming together. This pattern, this pattern, this pattern is the pattern that de-energizes water. So whatever you do, you must replicate that pattern. Then you can minimize the erosion. And you take you go and look on your floodplain, you'll see these lines of dry plants. You seen that? Yeah. They're your recharge. They're the main recharge runnel for that floodplain, but it very rarely ever sees water. What are you looking at, Stuart? All those flat things. <laughs> you need to look a bit harder. Yeah. No, we're looking at the vegetation now. Yeah. Because when you get this close, it's very hard to see the changes in elevation. I can see it, mm. but you, there's a diff there's a change in the plant species in through this way. See how they're much drier in through here? And they track up through there. So you use the plants to, to, as your guide. If you've got a lot of thistles, you'll find that the thistles will be growing in these areas on your plant plant. It's a bit harder, you know, you need to get a couple of seeds for me, so you have to. Or he's done a too good a job of managing it, and he doesn't need the thistles anymore. Okay, so we know that we've got one pattern down here. If we look over the other side, there's our other pattern. It comes in through where those gums are, and it comes back around, probably been cut off there by the road. It might have gone a little bit further out. automatically know through every town you drive through, the moment you drive, up, drive over the bridge into town, that's where the biggest step was. And the moment they put that bridge in, they destroyed the whole system. Because when they built it, not understanding that they needed to manage everything upstream, the putting the bridge in place created turbulence and actually started the head wall cut back up through the system. And it cut it out. But we can very easily fix it by what we just talked about.
and that requires a few changes in the laws and so <laughs> people to have a few more so, ideas. So you should have put the bridge upstream further? No, no, perfect place for the bridge, exactly right. the right place, but they have to incorporate this step on the top side of it. Because the, the bridge is necessary because we need to get vehicles across or a train or whatever it might be. So that's necessary. We need to have that. But we also need to have a landscape that functions. So, you know, however many years back they were wanting to dam this, well, this area, I think, was going to go underwater with yeah. They were wanting to dam the barrier if you right, which is blue. But anyway, that's government. They always can. Had they have thought, well, actually, let's spend a third of that money and let's put a series of steps down the Mary River, mm. they would have held probably double the amount of water and none of it could have evaporated. Mm. And every farm that operated under there would have been more productive. It's like so. drain it. So if you think government are going to lead us out of this, <laughs> sorry, you might as well go and jump off a bridge.